Hi, my name is Anupriti Varade and I'm a senior product manager with Amazon S3. Today, I'm looking forward to talking with you about Amazon S3 access points. During this video, I'll provide an overview on what Amazon S3 access points are and discuss how they work and when do you use them. Let's begin. Amazon S3 stores data as objects in S3 buckets. By default, only the resource owner can access these resources. That means the AWS account that you use to create a bucket and upload object owns that particular bucket. A bucket owner can grant cross account permissions to another AWS account to upload objects. In this case, the AWS account that uploads objects may own those objects. To grant cross-account permissions, typically there are two ways. First, user policies, where you can use AWS Identity and Access Management to manage access to your Amazon S3 resources. You can create IAM users, groups, and roles in your account and attach policies granting them access to AWS resources, including Amazon S3. Second, resource-based policies. Bucket policies and access control list are resource-based because you attach them to your S3 bucket and objects. Customers are increasingly using S3 to store shared data sets. Shared data sets are where data is aggregated and accessed by different applications, teams, and individuals, whether it is for analytics, machine learning, real-time monitoring, or other data lake use cases. As an application set grows, the bucket policy becomes more complex time consuming to manage and needs to be audited to make sure that the changes don't have an unexpected impact on another application. Hence, to simplify access management for shared data sets, we introduce Amazon S3 access points. S3 access points allows customers to create multiple access configurations specific to their application use case. Now, instead of a single bucket policy, use S3 access points as endpoints to a bucket to govern access to the shared data. Each access point has four main characteristics. First, the path to the data in the bucket. Is it an entire bucket or only the subset of a bucket? A unique name for the access point. Access control policy to enforce permissions by users and S3 API actions. Finally, network control such as internet or specific virtual private cloud network for any request made through access points. S3 access points do not impact performance or latency of the S3 request made. S3 access points are available for use in most AWS regions at no additional cost. Amazon S3 access points are access control endpoints attached to a specific bucket. Access points can be created in the same account as the bucket owner or in a different account. Each access point has an access policy catered towards set of users to meet their data access requirements. So to begin with, we first identify users and their requirements. Is it a user or a IAM role or an application account? And what kind of access they want? Is it just a read access or a write access? Is it to an entire bucket or a prefix or only to objects by specific tags? Next, we configure an access point policy that include requirements identified in step one. Create an access point with policy to limit access to subset of data by prefix or tags and to only allow requests needed for the users for their use case. Next, we choose network controls. Do you want to make the access point accessible from the internet? or restrict request made through that access point to originate from a specific virtual private cloud. Next, block public access. Similar to buckets, Amazon S3 access points support independent block public access settings for each access point. For any request made through an access point, S3 evaluates the block public access settings for that access point, the underlying bucket, and the bucket owner's account. If any of these settings indicate that the request should be blocked, Amazon S3 rejects the request. At this point, your access point is created. You can access the objects in an Amazon S3 bucket with an access point using AWS Management Console, AWS CLI, AWS SDKs, or S3 REST APIs. For S3 object operations, you can use the access point ARN in place of a bucket. 
For request requiring a bucket name in the standard S3 bucket name format, you can use an access point alias instead. With S3 access points, you can create application specific access points, permitting access to shared data sets with policies tailored to the specific application. There are multiple scenarios when you can use access points, and today we will discuss the most common scenarios. When you're sharing large data sets with multiple users, with access points, you can decompose one large bucket policy into separate discrete access point policies for each application. This makes it simpler to focus on building the right access policy for an application without worrying about disrupting what any other application is doing within the same shared data set. When you want to copy data securely and at high speeds between same region access points using S3 copy API over AWS internet networks and virtual private clouds. When you want to restrict access to a virtual private cloud, an S3 access point can limit all S3 storage access to happen from a virtual private cloud. You can also create a service control policy and require that all access points be restricted to a specific virtual private cloud, thereby firewalling your data to within your private networks. Finally, when you're setting up new application or migrating an existing application, use access points for testing access policies. When it comes to software designing or data lake implementations, keeping scope small and focused on a specific task is almost always a good decision. Using S3 access points simplifies the work of creating, sharing, and maintaining access to data in your shared S3 buckets. Let's look at the key highlights of S3 access points. You can create cross-account S3 access points. These access points are created and owned by different account than the account that owns the associated bucket. Bucket owners can securely scale access management by delegating permissions to other trusted accounts and still authorize data access via access points created in these accounts. You can use access point alias anywhere a bucket name is used today to perform object level operations such as put, get, list, and more. You can use S3 access point aliases with various AWS services, such as Amazon Redshift, Amazon EMR, Amazon Athena, Amazon SageMaker Feature Store, open source packages such as Apache Spark, Apache Hive, and Amazon Partner Network Solutions without any code changes. There's a soft limit of up to 10,000 access points allowed with a region per account. That means you can scale access management to thousands of use cases at the same time. As your organization looks to innovate faster and at scale, you need ways to securely manage access to your shared data. Amazon S3 access points simplifies the work of creating, sharing, and maintaining access to your shared S3 buckets. With separate discrete access point policies for each application, you can focus on building the right access policy for an application without worrying about other applications accessing the same shared data set. I hope you found this overview video helpful as you implement access control. In this video, we discussed an overview of Amazon S3 access points feature. Amazon S3 also has similar helpful features such as multi-region access points to accelerate performance when accessing data sets stored across multiple AWS regions, and object lambda access points to add your own code to S3 get, list, and head request to process data as it is returned to an application. I encourage you to check out AWS documentation for additional feature details along with guidance on how to get started. Thank you for your time.